Hello, I'm Mercedes Stevenson, and this is the West Block, politics, perspectives, and players. I am staying on to fight the fight that Canadians elected us to do. Uh, there are very serious risks facing this country, and Canadians expect us to stay united and stay focused on the job at hand, and that's precisely what I'm going to do. Now is not the time for internal divisions or internal party politics. That is an unfortunate part of the uh, Conservative tradition in this country. That was embattled Conservative Party leader Andrew Scheer, defiant against a growing chorus of demands for him to step down. While Scheer calls the bloodletting Conservative tradition, many inside the party blame Scheer for losing the election and are now openly campaigning to force him out in what is looking more and more like a Conservative civil war. Can Andrew Scheer survive the attacks, or are his days as the leader of Her Majesty's loyal opposition coming to an end? Joining me now are people who know that party inside and out. In Calgary, Jenny Byrne, former National Campaign Director for Prime Minister Stephen Harper, and in Edmonton, Conservative MP Garnet Jenis. Uh, start with you, Jenny. You came out a couple of days ago. You broke your silence. You said, you know what, it's time for Andrew Scheer to go. He's got to resign. He's got to get out of there. He can't be the leader anymore. Why do you believe that he can't stay on? Well. In conversations that I've had with conservative members across the country, uh, people feel the same way uh, uh, that I do. At the end of the day, there is only one question that members are asking themselves now and what they're going to be asking themselves uh, leading into uh, our convention in, uh, in scheduled for Toronto in, uh, in mid-April, and that is, can Andrew Scheer win? Can he beat Justin Trudeau? Uh, in the next election, be it whenever it is. It could be in a year, it could be a year and a half and two. And where people are, are at is that he cannot uh, beat Justin Trudeau in the next election. Jenny, why do you think that is? Is it the social conservative issues? Is it environment? Is it his personality? What is it about Andrew Scheer that you believe means he cannot be prime minister? But I don't. I, I don't think at this point it does. It doesn't even matter uh, why. There's. 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 There's people in in Quebec that will say uh, his personal opinion on abortion uh, was an issue. I don't. I don't personally think that's the case. Uh, there's others that will talk about uh, gay marriage. There's some that will talk about policy positions like environment or uh, handling issues like uh, uh, his American citizenship or resume. I don't think at the end of the day it matters. Whatever the reason is that people have, uh, conservative members across the country don't think Andrew can beat Justin Trudeau in the next election. Uh, Garnet, you're a friend of Andrew Shears. You're an ally of Andrew Shears. Do you agree that he should step down as party leader? No, I, I don't. And I think my position reflects the overwhelming consensus of elected Conservative members of Parliament. And I think it reflects where members are at as well. Remember that at the first caucus meeting, uh, Conservative caucus members overwhelmingly voted not to give themselves the power to uh, remove the leader. And, um, you know, you've got some people that are, are not members of caucus uh, expressing a view. Uh, but you, we haven't had a single member of caucus come out to take the position that, uh, that Jenny has. There's going to be a process. There's always a process. Stephen Harper went through that process after 2004 uh, where the members got to decide. What was very interesting is uh, we see people like Corey tonight coming out and already essentially conceding the convention saying well the convention's going to be rigged anyways which is I think his way of saying that whatever he might want to say the members think uh, he and others that are opposing Andrew Scheer's leadership are not at all confident that they can actually uh, bring, bring that support to bear uh, where it counts. So obviously well, there's going to be a few people who are conservatives who have a different point of view, but I think I think the the uh, the impression of caucus and of the members uh, is clear and will be heard in April. Jenny, well, go and, ahead. I, and I, yeah, I'd just like to jump in quickly and say uh, this isn't just uh, about the opinion of what uh, caucus is. Uh, that is important, but I found it extremely strange yesterday that there was very little caucus support uh, in terms of uh, of the appointment of uh, of the new uh, of the new uh, of deputy leader. I would also like to point out that this is not uh, anything like 2004. Uh, I worked for the party at the time. I worked for Stephen Harper. In six months, Stephen Harper uh, helped merge the party, merge the, our party. Uh, win a leadership race and uh, brought uh, the Paul Martin Liberals to a minority. And by the way, it was touted as going to be the biggest majority in Canadian history by the Liberal Party themselves. Oh, Garnet, I, I've I'll heard just, from I'll, members I'll just, of caucus. 
Go ahead. Yeah, if I'll just qu quickly respond to those points. Um, I, I don't know where Jenny's getting this from, that there isn't support for uh, Leona Alislav uh, as deputy leader. Uh, she's she's going to be strongly supported in that uh, position, and she's done an incredible job uh, in her uh, last couple of years as a Conservative MP, and she's exactly the sort of person that uh, Conservatives need to bring on side in the Toronto area to win the election. Uh, in terms of the 2004 comparisons, uh, you know, obviously there's, there's always differences here and there, but the expectations for Paul Martin of, of winning the biggest majority ever. That was before the breaking of the sponsorship scandal. Uh, I mean, the, the political no, that's impact, not true. the that's massive actually, impact of okay, the sponsorship Garnet, scandal. That's well, actually any, not... Anybody that's who not was, any, I, I just want to step in for well, was Garnet because scandal, you're saying no, that you was there. Absurd. Garnet, you've said Garnet. that you you haven't heard from members of caucus saying that they want Andrew Shear to go. I have. I've heard from a number of members of caucus. They're sort of waiting to see what happens. But you've certainly heard from the grassroots. I mean, in the meetings in Quebec, uh, in Ottawa here uh, on, last week, and in Alberta, certainly Andrew Shear is hearing from failed candidates who didn't win. He's hearing from donors out in Alberta who are saying they're deeply concerned. Uh, this isn't just about the opinion of caucus. It's a very grassroots party. I understand that, but the grassroots are starting to really say he needs so, to go. So, so I I do not share that characterization of the grassroots opinion. But we're going to find out in April. Uh, clearly, there are individuals who have a different point of view. That was the case under Stephen Harper. It's always the case where there's some individuals that, uh, for whatever reason, have a different opinion on the direction of the leadership. And look, I you know full respect to people who are good conservatives, members of parliament, and have a different point of view uh, than I do. But what's striking to me is that uh, the the people on the other side of this equation uh, they don't want to go through the process. They don't trust the process. Uh, that's going to happen in April. They instead want to create uh, distraction and try and force uh, an action before that convention. Uh, I say, yep. if you think the members are on your side, hey, let's spend the next few months uh, focusing on challenging the Trudeau minority government. Let's have the vote in April. Let's see where it goes. Uh, and then uh, if it's the will of the members, we'll have a leadership race. Uh, but well, I suspect that when people are actually counted, you'll find uh, that, you know, the, the, the folks that are, you know, a couple people here and there that are commenting in the media or anonymous sources, uh, you know, coming from caucus isn't reflective of where the vast majority of people actually are. Well, but but I'd like to say this this is this is the issue that we're having. This the the question of Andrew's leadership has been uh, spoken about uh, uh, among conservative uh, members, uh, both in caucus and at the grassroots, for the last month. The last week, it has gripped the party in a way uh, that that nothing else is uh, is being discussed, and it's going to continue to do that leading into the leadership race. If we continue. We're to do that, we are, let me finish, we are going to yeah. do nothing but give Justin Trudeau a free ride uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the next five months, because that's all people are talking about, Garnet. Because it is a yeah. it is not just an elephant in the room. It's 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 a bunch yeah. of elephants in the room, and that is all what people are talking about. In terms of uh, in terms of Leona El Elislav, I do agree with you. Those are act those are liberals that we need to attract in our party uh, uh, to join the Conservative Party, and that's great. But that doesn't mean they have to be given leadership positions. This is a person who campaigned against us, who said very critical things about uh, Prime Minister Stephen Harper uh, during and after the 2015 campaign. This is not a small position. This was a position in opposition that was held by the co-founder of the party, uh, Peter McKay. And so I think uh, in terms of uh, grassroots members across the country, uh, this, these are the decisions they're looking at and they're scratching their head. Yeah. With, Jenny, with, what with about people respect, who say that who say that you know at least give him a second chance, a second election? Stephen Harper got a second election. Most leaders do. It's too soon to be pushing him out. But but uh, Mercedes, as I said, 2004 was different. We we picked up in Ontario, for example, we picked up share of the popular vote and went from two seats to 20, 24 seats. We picked up 22 seats yeah. in the province we won of Ontario the popular in 2000. Vote. In two th yeah, we won, and we went down in votes yeah. in Quebec and Ontario. Um, uh, so we, I don't think it's an automatic. It's not a. It's not. It's no. We actually went down in votes. Uh, uh, we, we, we we picked we up went seats down in Ontario. Votes. We won the popular vote. We. We, we went but you, down but in, where you won the we vote, down Garnet, in was in Alberta, Garnet, yeah. and you won the vote, the vote in, in Saskatchewan. But in key areas yeah. that you have to win to go yeah. forward, like Ontario and Quebec, that was not the case. And that's the criticism yeah, so, here. So, and, and I'm, I'm and wondering, I'm, I'm though... Not gonna, 
Yeah, I, I'm just going to respond to that. I'm not going to say we ran a perfect campaign. There's a data-driven process that's being led by uh, by John Baird, and it's going to provide reports back. We made substantial gains in some regions of the country. There's particular areas such as the Greater Toronto area uh, where obviously we didn't get the the growth that uh, that we were hoping for. But but that's a, a point I need to respond to that Jenny okay. made earlier. Okay, I'm sorry, Garda. I, I do have to stop you there because we're actually out of time on the panel. But certainly, I'm sure an issue we're going to be coming okay. back to, and we appreciate both of your time today. Uh, whether or not Andrew Scheer will be staying on as leader. We'll be keeping a close eye on that going forward for the next week. Thank you both. Thank, Thank you. you. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining us. For the West Block, I'm Mercedes Stevenson.